Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the services at Unity of Music City here coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm your guest speaker today, Vic Sorrell, and it's my gift, as always, to welcome you uh, to be a part of our services. Uh, this morning, we send our love to Ryan Gill and the Harmony Four, who are, deser- who are enjoying some uh, well-deserved time away, and we also send our love to Deb Moore and Nikki, who are traveling, and uh, we hold the space for them, and we'll certainly be eager to welcome them back uh, in weeks to come. But today, we have with us uh, a returning friend of this ministry and, uh, and a reunited friend of mine this morning, uh, musical guest, the Reverend Deborah Bishop. So we'll go to her for a song. Deborah, thank you, Vic. Thank you too. And it's wonderful to be here today. So hello, everybody. This is a song I hope um, speaks to you. some of what we've all been going through and in the moments when maybe we might feel a little bit alone. <laughs> around you and heal your pain and the tears that found you wash away like rain and when you're lonely I pray, I pray you feel the one and only true love reveal cause you are not alone may kindness find you when you're too tired and love remind you to live a life inspired may strength be yours when you need it most in the name of the daughter the mother and the holy ghost beautiful song, beautiful message, which reminds me uh, and all of us this morning that if you have lost a loved one from COVID, if you're hospitalized due to COVID, if you're home quarantining due to COVID recovering, or if you've been exposed, you are not alone. And our prayers and our love are with you. And our highest thoughts and 
affirmation for healing and radiant health are with you as well. We do have a few announcements this morning. Um, Unity of Music City is open on a limited occupancy, so thanks for those who are with us today. It's good to see your faces. We practice social distancing and masks, masks are required. The Namaste Cafe and children's programs are not available, so please plan accordingly. An email was sent out this week giving you the opportunity to renew your membership at Unity of Music City and to update your information if needed. If you have not responded, please do so as soon as possible. And if you didn't receive the email, please call Janet in the office on Tuesday or Wednesday between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. at 615-847-7480. You should have also received an email regarding the property sale contingencies. And if you have not responded by January 18th, your vote will not be counted. Just an FYI. Small trees are available for a love donation to the church from now until April 2021. Call Trish Marshall at 615-631-9916 for details. And you can join the Lunch Bunch book club via Zoom every Wednesday morning at 11.30 a.m. They're reading the book Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. And you can contact Karen Burr for more information or see the weekly email. And now, back to Deborah for another beautiful song. I love playing in this space. There's mm -hmm. something completely otherworldly about being here, so I'm, I'm really excited and delighted and happy to share space with you, Rick. Thank you. He came upon me like a whirlwind Spinning my senses round and round Fell to my knees, it was the real thing Felt my spirit come unbound No, I don't have the answers, but I'm willing to see Spirit, use me and set me free. I love the way it feels when you move through me. Oh, you use me. Oh, Spirit, use me. You are the way, the light, 
way the light above the peace. Excuse me. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Beautiful song, beautiful voice. So today, as you all see, I'm wearing several hats. And it's my pleasure to provide our reading today from the Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo. And this is the January 10 excerpt. We are born with only one obligation, to be completely who we are. Yet how much of our time is spent comparing ourselves to others, dead and alive? This is encouraged as necessary in the pursuit of excellence. Yet a flower, in its excellence, does not yearn to be a fish, and a fish, in its unmanaged excellence, does not long to be a tiger. But we humans find ourselves always falling into the dream of another life. Or we secretly aspire to the fortunate fame of people we don't really know. When feeling badly about ourselves, we often try on other skins rather than understand and care for our own. Yet when we compare ourselves to others, we see neither ourselves nor those we look up to. We only experience the tension of comparing, as if there is only one ounce of being to feed all of our hunger. But the universe reveals its abundance most clearly when we can be who we are. Mysteriously, every weed and ant and wounded rabbit Every living creature has its unique anatomy of being, which when given over to, is always more than enough. So it is my privilege today to lead meditation. And wherever you may be, whether you are sitting down or standing up, I would love for you to Just shake it out for a minute, change your energy for a moment, yeah, shift around just a tiny, tiny bit, and then feel your feet very solidly on the ground, and if you're sitting down, feel your back all the way to the back of the chair, so that you can just relax your back and feel supported by the universe. It's a lovely metaphor for what is true, because the universe always supports you. And then gently just let your eyelids get heavy and close your eyes and allow yourself to just be in this process for a moment. And take a nice, good, deep breath in. Feel it coming in through the top of your head. And let it flow all the way down to the soles of your feet, or however deep you can take it. And then breathe out. And as you breathe out, feel your body just release and let go all it does not need. So breathing in that infinite, unlimited energy source through the top of the head, take it as deep as you can. And as you release out, just letting go with effortless ease, everything you do not need. Breathing in light and love of infinite source. And breathing out, and as you breathe out, just letting the stress release. And breathing in and replacing all these areas that are releasing with beautiful infinite light and love and peace. And as you breathe out, let go tension. Breathing in, breathing in infinite light and love and source energy. And as you breathe out, releasing struggle and pain from wherever it may be in your body. Effortlessly with each exhalation. And breathing in infinite love and light and source energy, filling in all of those spaces and allowing yourself just to feel yourself in the presence of wholeness. And breathe into this wholeness and feel it in the soles of your feet. Breathe into this wholeness and feel it in the weight of your legs. Breathe into this wholeness and feel it in the pit of your stomach. Breathe into this wholeness and feel it just flowing up and down your torso now, flowing into your lungs and in your heart beating. Breathe into this wholeness and feel it in the tips of your fingers and the palms of your hands. 
Breathe into this wholeness and feel it flowing up your arms and into your neck and into the throat. Breathing into this wholeness, let it fill your face and your skull and your brain and your entire body now is just breathing this infinite light and love into the wholeness of you. And with each exhalation, effortlessly releasing anything it no longer needs, anything that no longer serves you, without judgment, just letting go and letting love and light fill you and be in this place, this divine space that you have every right to be in. This is your birthright to be whole, to be divine, to be healed, to be loved, to be filled. So breathe into this and listen to your heart beating as it amplifies this presence within you effortlessly with great gratitude, feeling the soles of your feet and the weight of your legs and your back and your arms, feeling the presence of yourself where you are right now, whole and healed and filled with divine light, filled with grace, filled with source energy, the divine being that you are, gently opening your eyes and coming back to this moment, this time, and this place, fully energized, awake and aware. And so it is. Thank you, Deb. Very nice. Very nice. Good morning again, everybody. Oh, yes. I think that uh, you would probably agree with me that we are experiencing the, the throes of adulthood this week, uh, the realities of being adults in a world that can be very confusing and scary at times. And so that's exactly where we're going to go today. We're going to dive right into that and, uh, and meet that head on and look at some of what our teachings might have for us in times of confusion, such as the week that we've all just experienced together. But first, I thought we could maybe use a puppy. <laughs> it seems like I can always use a puppy. And the fact that we might shift our focus to something such as that sweet face in times of confusion, in times of despair, in times that are heavy, is not a denial of the realities that we're experiencing that are heavy but instead an embrace of the allness that is true. That in every circumstance, there is always good. And yet in this question, in this image, what the question really is, is do you recall the day that you realized for yourself that you were no longer a child and that you're now an adult? Do you remember that day? Was it a day? For most of us, I would say it probably was not a certain day. And yet over time, just like this precious baby that we all are on the inside, there's a change <laughs> that sometimes happens. And I know that myself, I can resonate with that image that sometimes our adulthood feels very heavy. It feels very different. But the only way to actually be an adult, to be a responsible, reverent, true cosmic adult with regard to our universal nature, is to stay with the child within. The eternal innocence of ourselves and others, for only in our innocence are we willing to even consider complete dependence on God. And the only way we can experience independence in the material world is through complete dependence on God and provision through the world of spirit. 
And even though this makes sense to many of us that have been learning these teachings and, and, and entertaining these teachings for years, it's completely counterintuitive to everything that's part of what we've come to know as survival and what is ours to do in the world. And you think about the times that you consider all the areas of life and you think, well, relationship, I can give that to God. Um, health, I can give that to God. Career, I better keep that for myself. <laughs> I better take care of that one because that's really important because that's about my money, right? When actually, A Course in Miracles would remind us that until we are being the conscious, reverent, awake, available, discerning, aligned expressions of love, it would be best that we actually didn't do anything at all, <laughs> lest we miscreate. And I think that this week, maybe like many of you, I found that I watched a little too much news, a little too, and it doesn't matter which, which network you watch, I don't think it's possible to feel good after a certain point of watching too much news media. And we heard a lot said about what we saw. One thing I remember was the scenes at the Capitol don't reflect a true America. This is not who we are. When in reality, when you think about it, All we have to really base on who we are is how we create. And when we don't typically want to meet our shadows, it makes it very difficult to embrace them. And the reality is that because of the way this country was founded, many of us do still feel an entitlement to a white America with white leaders a predominantly white culture, English as the official language, and that is simply not who we all are. And we are a we, and an us. Whether we believe that or not, or see that or not, that is the reality. Us and them is not the truth. Us and them would reflect an insufficient, incomplete, and dare I say, inferior structure where everyone suffers because all gifts are not in the game. When whiteness is overvalued and considered standard, the abundant gifts of other perspectives are lost on our collective. So collectively, then, what is ours to be? We've come so far now as the result of thinking in certain ways that we can't simply get out of it. We literally have to grow out of this. We have to grow through our spiritual wisdom and insight, which does happen instantly. And yet our embodiment process happens linearly over time. The wisdom can be shown to us in an instant. Our embodiment takes time, takes days, takes months, takes weeks, years. But eventually, as we walk out that process of embodying the truth and the energy of the wisdom that we discern, we do become the change. We do become a change. So when we consider our adulthood, from a cosmic sense. And when I say cosmic, I mean as defined relating to the universe. We know we live in an energetic universe. Everything is energy. Our eyes see form, but what we know from science is that the, the particles that make up the form that is that chair are actually just moving at such a slow rate, vibrating at such a slow rate, that that appears to be a solid object. But it is, in fact, energy. The same way that I am energy, the same way that Deb is energy. We're all energy. Our thoughts are energy. But when you take full responsibility for living according to that truth, what changes? 
when you consider the fact that your body is completely made up of energy, how does how do your decisions around healthcare change, for instance? How do your decisions around creating wellness change? How do your decisions around money change when you consider that money is also energy? What I'm getting at is, if we are energetic beings and we know that we are, then A Course in Miracles would suggest that taking full responsibility for our adulthood as energetic cosmic adults means taking full responsibility for the causal level of our lives that we can control, our thoughts, such that the effects of our thoughts, the outpicturing, what we see as the forms of our lives, are in alignment with love solutions. So when we look at events that unfolded, like last week at the Capitol, it's so easy for us to immediately go to, I could never do that. How could they even consider? And yet, how readily might we be willing to attack ourselves at any given moment? How readily might we be able to attack our neighbor for some trivial notion, anything, because their dogs bark too much, right? The energy of attack is within us all at some level. And cosmic adulthood is about being able to see an extreme and recognize your part in its solution. This is inventory time, this time of year. We've been talking about that. And as these events continue, God forbid they do continue, they have continued up until this week, we must remain awake to our connection to the one, the one love that is evolving us through these circumstances. On some level, what we witnessed on Wednesday is our own self-hatred, self-hatred, self-judgment, our own anger, our own. Every person that we witnessed on television at the Capitol is ours. There's only one of us here. They are ours, and we are theirs. To get to watch in the safety of our homes as these events unfold, still presents us with the opportunity that we choose what we will do with what we see and what we watch. What is the story that we tell ourselves about the events and about those who participated? Are we strong in the reality of ultimate innocence or are we stronger in the reality of ultimate guilt? Because our freedom, our ability to be the love solutions to what we see has everything to do with what we hold in consciousness about ourselves and others. And now more than ever, if I came away from this past week after having watched too much news, knowing one thing, it is this. Those of us who can focus on reality with a capital R, those of us who can hold a vision of ultimate innocence and truth with a capital T, meaning the truth of who we all are in the realm of the eternal, have to now. We have to. That is our most important work, is being able to hold that focus no matter what circumstances we see unfold on this material level, in this material world. It's so much a part of us and has become so much of a part of us over the years, but can we explain it to a sixth grader? Are we that clear about what we believe to be true about ourselves and everybody that we can have a clarity of belief, a clarity of focus, chosen focus, that can serve us in times such as these? 
Closing our hearts to those who have closed their hearts continues the cycle. And closed hearts, very much like closed mouths, cannot be heard. We have to hear the voices of our hearts. Discernment in these times is more important than ever. And just in case you needed to read it. (laughs) Closing our hearts to those who have closed their hearts continues the cycle. A teaching from A Course in Miracles that we've touched on before that I find is now even more important than when we spoke about it several weeks ago. Our self-perception will determine our behavior. Because the energy, and we already established that we're all energy, our thoughts are energy, everything is energy. The energy of our self-perception will be infused in our behavior. Seeing ourselves as anything other than holy extensions of spirit means we will believe we have to make something of ourselves. Think about that expression. You know, people used to say, you need to go out and make something of yourself, right? What happens when we make something of ourselves? Of ourselves. Of our ego minds. Miscreation. Judgment. Separation. We need make ourselves available to something, to the spirit of love. We know our minds acting in separation is miscreation. But do we realize that our minds acting in separation creates entitlement instead of worthiness? Entitlement. Seeing ourselves as the result of our own means. Every concern in entitlement is with false things. And why we haven't gotten whatever it is that we feel entitled to because we did the work, we got the degree, we made the sacrifice, we, we, this, this, this. Entitlement. But there's an alternative to entitlement, and it's called worthiness. Worthiness is imagining ourselves completely dependent on God. Human independence in the material realm. Total dependence on God. No focus on false things and acquiring them, but instead a recognition of the worth of the gifts that we possess as the result of our connection to love. See the difference? In worthiness, we recognize the worth of what we have to give. And we give it willingly, graciously, and eagerly so that the universe can take its course of naturally flowing back to us, shaken up, pressed down, rolling over. What is that you all say? All that we give. In entitlement, it's a different energy. I deserve this because I did this. There's a withholding. There's a constriction there. So your ministry is here. And it's beckoning you now. It has been. It continues to. And especially now more than ever. It's about what we decide to think about the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And even more than that, It's about how we see ourselves in these times. You know, I was thinking about this last night, and I had a very interesting occurrence in the night. I was thinking about how important it is for us to be able to see ourselves. And yet, I woke up in the middle of the night, and of course the lights were out, and I about broke my neck on tripping on a dog toy. (laughs) And in that instant, which fortunately I did not fall, but in that instant I thought to myself, even in the middle of the night, 
See how things can change so fast when you can't see well. When you're in darkness. When you can't see yourself. When you can't see where you're going. (laughs) And I had a conversation with a friend of mine, a young friend of mine, who is working very diligently in this time to launch a new business for himself as an entrepreneur. And he was talking about this idea and this idea and this idea. And I said to him, I said, do you see yourself? Do you really see yourself? Can you see yourself? Because if you did, if you saw yourself in the truth of your light, in the truth of the love that you are, I think your idea stream would be very different about how you would be approaching this opportunity to be seen as an entrepreneur or how you would position your business in the world. If you truly saw yourself and the light that you are and the love that you are, the places you would let yourself go, the words you would let yourself say, and to whom? There was a song that I wrote many years ago, and one of the lines is, love is the vision, love is the way. We are the instruments that love wants to play. Do you see that? Do you see you? Are you willing to see the truth of you? in your cosmic adulthood, in your energetic nature, in your divine connection to all that is? And are you willing to see the events in the world and yourself as connected instead of divided? Are you willing to see? Because very little happens right within the thoughts of broken sight. My prayer for myself and for all of us now is that we see ourselves today as an answer. We see ourselves today as a solution. We see ourselves today as available instruments for love in life today, right where we are. When we see ourselves this way, we become an answer to what we saw this past week in Washington. We become the love solution. Just as we go about the daily events of our lives. And that is one way that we create change. Namaste. We are going to say together our offering affirmation, which I think Crystal's going to bring up momentarily. Yes. We say these words together. I am open to receiving floods of financial abundance with ease so that I may be able to give back even more to the world around me. Namaste. That was beautiful. Thanks. And profound. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you, too.
words of kindness and forgive another one's blindness. Grant me courage, give me strength to be all that I am. Cause I To know the next steps to take Love and forgiveness For the mistakes that I will make Grant me wisdom Give me strength To be all that I am Cause I was born to fly Spread our wings Kiss the sky. We were born, all born to fly. Spread our wings. Kiss the sky. Holy, holy, holy. streets of plenty oh fill in the hearts that are running on empty grant me courage give me strength to be all that I am beautiful Oh, gosh. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you, Deborah Bishop. It's wonderful to see you, wonderful to hear you. Beautiful, beautiful music. Thank you to all of you for being here with us in, in person. Thank you for watching us today and joining us together in seeing ourselves. We are going to see ourselves this week in a way that we've never seen ourselves before. And we're going to close today saying together our prayer for, for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Have a beautiful week. We'll see you next week.
that's laid upon my table and the beating of my heart sounds just like an angel's wings my world it sings cause I believe oh the beating of my heart sounds just like an angel's wings Sings, cause I 